It's time to roll the credits with Chris and Wayne. Hello, everyone. I'm Wayne Pyle. And I'm Chris Ty. Welcome to Roll the Credits, the official video podcast of the Hunter Mountain Film Festival, which will take place online this year from October 23rd through the 25th. Make sure that you check out all the other great content we have available at HunterMountainFilmFestival.com. Hey, Chris, before we uh, meet our very special guest tonight, <laughs> I have a question for you. Um, sure. Were you a fan of soap operas back in the day? Well, you know, Wayne, I was more a uh, guy who just loved comedy. So when it comes to soap operas, I was more the guy who watched the TV show Soap. Oh, yeah, yeah. As I love that fact, too, actually. Our favorite character on that show growing up uh, was Benson. It was just <laughs> Benson. So much so, my brother and I named our dog Benson. Oh, that's great. That's great. Well, my mom loved soap operas. She recorded them. She had to watch them all the time. And so as a young actor, I thought to myself, would I ever appear on a soap opera? And so I have a little surprise for you. Uh, I want you to check out this clip. All I have Dimitri. Erica Kane? Yes. Sign here. Oh, so do you recognize <laughs> that, that young man coming through the door? Oh, wow. there, right? That was me 25 yeah. years ago, December 29th, 1995. And I was delivering divorce papers from Dimitri yeah. to Erica Kane on All My Children. It was my first TV job and I was super nervous. The director actually stopped me after my first take and he said, um, when you come in the door and hand her the papers, just to give her a look. And I was like, a look? And he goes, yeah, yeah, look, look at how she's dressed. She's gorgeous. Give her a look. So that's why. <laughs> that's why you had that look. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I did a look. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to give her a look. And uh, they loved it. We, we, we wrapped after the second take, and that was my first TV job. It's appropriate that your uh, first TV job was All My Children because our special guest tonight played the legendary Tara Martin on All My Children. That's right, Chris. She did. Thanks so much for that great transition. Uh, and tonight, we are very excited to be speaking with the amazingly multi-talented Karen Lynn Gorney, the recipient of our Lifetime Achievement Award at the Hunter Mountain Film Festival this year. Karen Lynn is not only an American actress best known as the romantic star of Saturday Night Fever as the girl Stephanie who said no to John Travolta after winning a dance contest with him. She is also a talented dancer, artist, and singer. In addition to her legendary turn as Tara Martin on All My Children, she has also guest starred in a number of TV shows, including Law and & Order, The Sopranos, and Six Degrees, as well as doing independent films and off-Broadway shows. Karen Lynn is a winner of the People's Choice and European Bravo Awards. She has received raves in New York City and throughout the United States, performing everything from William Shakespeare to Neil Simon. And Wayne, Karen Lynn's many independent films include A Crime with Harvey Keitel and Searching for Bobby D, De Niro, with Sandra Bernhardt, and most recently, First One In and Clifford, Big Red Dog. Karen Lynn, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. We're honored to have you on the show. I am honored to be here, and thank you very much for having me. Oh, You're very welcome. Ours. And Karen Lynn, You've had such a wide range of experiences, but we're really curious about your most recent work. And I'd love to hear more about the two most recent films you, you've done, First One In and, and Clifford. What was it like working, working on each of those films? Well, comedy is really the thing that interests me. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a nothing like making people laugh and laughing yourself. <laughs> oh, it's very healing. So. The last two films have actually been comedies, which is fantastic. Uh, I've been doing, I guess you, you talk, talk about it as character work because the, the characters are a little wacky. Um, first one in, which is on Amazon Prime, even as we speak, which is fabulous. Uh, this character, she's an ordinary mama who, has the depressed daughter. Mm. And there are a lot of those around. So my goal is to get her to be happy 
and married and have the bambinos, you know. Uh, that's, <laughs> it's, so, it's very typical. Uh, and I, I want the bambinos for me because uh, they're fun. And so what I do is I try to get her to take drugs uh, for her depression, uh, which she won't do. And then I decide she's she's been kicked off a, sh a show like Survivor, a su Survivor kind of show. Oh, right. Uh, and she also has lost her job in real estate. So in addition to being basically kind of depressed, this is insult to injury. So she, I dye her hair blonde, which <laughs> should lift her spirits. There you go. And I encourage her and I make her special food and, uh, you know, try my damnedest to raise a, her uh, mood. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she was a, really good at tennis when she was in high school, so I call her best friend in high school, who she's, she's had a falling out with anyway. So that's first one in. And it, there's a lot of tennis, which is really fun to watch. Um, now, Clifford, the big red dog, who knew about the big red dog? I mean, apparently he's like this superhero kind of character and has been for years. And so this is a live action with uh well when i was shooting i did see this sort of big red dog sort of a suit kind of i i i don't know what i saw it was there <laughs> it was the dog right <laughs> and um i play in that a uh, uh control freak manager of a very exclusive private school oh, whose great. goal is to control the world <laughs> <laughs> and uh I, no one comes in or out without me giving them my okay. And uh, I, we were supposed to come out in November with this, but no, we have uh, the Black Plague or something going on yeah. here. And yeah. we have to wait until that's over. So that it's going to be out next year. But I, oh. I think it'll be a lot of fun. There's a lot of very uh, socially positive messages Um about about mm -hmm. people of different colors and stuff and different classes and i was very impressed with the with the script when i read it i thought it was really good so that's really uh, great that, i'm yeah I actually i actually want to go see that <laughs> yeah oh good okay yeah. hey. I, do. I also i have a 10 year old too who i'm sure would love it so oh the kids yeah. will go nuts yeah. but it has a really <laughs> good message uh rosie perez is gonna be in it oh great and uh cleese Cleese is in it. I'm actually in a film. Oh, with great. Cleese. Wow, that's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, <laughs> one of my favorites. And Monty Python and yes. all the stuff. You go to YouTube and watch him. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I have I have a funny thing. Uh, we have a funny connection, actually. Um, I wanted to tell you about it. Back in 1995. Oh. Um, I actually delivered divorce papers from Dimitri to Erica Kane on all my children. <laughs> <laughs> I was the delivery man. I had a full head of hair and I knocked on the door and she comes running and she's like, Dimitri. And she throws open the door and it's me standing there giving her divorce oh papers. <laughs> Only one divorce? That, yeah. Well, that was like her third one, I think, on the show, right? She um, married every, every male on the show. <laughs> right, right. That's right. I think it was her third from Dimitri at that point. <laughs> well, yeah, they would get married and divorce. It's crazy, yeah. So I'm just, I was just thinking about that after reading your bio, and I went on YouTube and I actually found my old clip, so that was really fun. Um, but I was thinking, like, um, I'd love to hear about an, an experience. It could be from all my children. It could be from anything that you've done um, that sticks out to you as something that's the most fulfilling or rewarding or even in some way challenging. We'd love to, I love hearing these stories about, like, experiences in the business that really, you know, stick with people. I just thought of something. There's two actually. Uh, this I made this little film called Marty's Calling, meaning Marty Martin Scorsese, and I had to play a really old lady, and you know, with physically really old one, and uh, I had done a play uh, called Knock It Off, and and that play I, it was a comedy. And I played an old lady, but this old lady was older. Mm. And I, I had my old lady shoes and it was freezing. I had to be outside shopping and making Italian food. And it, it worked, it worked out. Uh, 
everything I did was very old lady, you know, <laughs> but it was a little horrifying. Um, going to be at the Chelsea film festival, but the real thing I, I thought about this question a lot. Um, I, I started dance when I was very little because my mother thought I was clumsy, mm. which occasionally is true. Uh, most, most dancers are actually. <laughs> and I started really young and I uh, started, uh, wanted to do ballet. So they put me in this class with Madame Mordkin, who is mm. the wife of Michael Mordkin who danced with Pavlova all mm. over the world. So she was formidable, you know, the Russian ballet. And mm. she used to hit my legs with a stick. Oh, I know it's pretty horrible. So I get, right. even though I, I love ballet and I wanted to be a ballerina and everything. And, uh, I decided maybe the little girls all went on toe and if that sort of scared me, with the stick and the toe and all that. So <laughs> I, I decided I hated ballet and I, <laughs> old fashioned and I was going to do modern. So I began mm. to dance with uh, all these Martha Graham disciples, uh, May O'Donnell and, and uh, P.D. Trigg. And then I did jazz with Jojo Smith, who's, mm -hmm. Fabulous trainer. He, I, I'd been very weak for a while there, and he, he fluffed me up very quickly without hurting me. It's amazing. Well, then later he sent me to his ballet teacher, Trudy Gasparinetti. Ah. And I said, oh, no, it's going to hit my legs, and it's going to be horrible. <laughs> well, excuse me. I have never laughed so hard in my life. And I've been with her for 40 years. Wow. Right? That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I have learned, although we got the black plague now, but so I have to work by myself until maybe she'll come back with us again. But I learned how making mistakes was, was not to slit your wrist over. Or get hit with a stick. Or right. get hit with a yeah, stick. Exactly. Oh my God! <laughs> and uh, this carried on to this carries over to everything. You know, mm -hmm. making mistakes is how do you know what it is until you know what it's not? <laughs> right, right. You know? So you got to figure. You got to do everything it's not, and what's left is what is, and what it is. So, and then. If you would make a mistake, we would laugh hysterically. I mean, it was very small class, mostly people, professional dancers or ones who had been professional dancers, you know, not spring chickens, as my mother would say. <laughs> and uh, the laughter was just so healing. Plus, you get a good workout. And thank God I have some strength now from it. And I continue uh, to, to do it. It's very important to as strong as humanly possible. That's really great. Well, I was always curious, you know, how you came into to dancing through your career, but um, I mean, you're also an artist and a singer. Yeah, well, that was the first yourself? thing. Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh, no, I was just curious what your inspiration was for those and your experience. Well, when I was a little girl, uh, I, I, the first, I mean, like a baby, the first thing I wanted to be was a painter. Wow. Oh. And then came dancing, I think. They're very similar in a way because of line. You know, you're into right. line mm -hmm. and yeah. watching yourself in the mirror and, and uh, movement, which is painting, is a lot like dancing, very similar. Mm. But then I wanted to be – so I studied. I studied. I studied sculpture uh, and, and painting and everything I wanted to – do I started studying because uh, I was fascinated with it. And then I wanted to be a musician or a composer like daddy. Uh -huh. First yes. I want to be like mommy. Then I want to be like dad. <laughs> and, uh, and I started to play guitar when I was nine and make up songs and stuff. And then I eventually later uh, studied songwriting. Uh, still a had a problem with notes because I'm dyslexic. So mm. I used to have 
terror every time I saw notes written down, I'd have an anxiety attack. Oh, but I, I eventually. I, How did you get over that? I mean, that must have been very <laughs> difficult to see them jumping all over the place like that, right? Ooh, well, I, 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 you know, I got through my fear, and I can read the the right hand on piano, but the left hand because it mm. goes down, it's very confusing. Right, you, but anyway, I wrote everything by ear, pretty much like I see. Errol oh. Garner, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I recorded now three CDs, which are on all the the venues um, and uh, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And I really like the first one is all my own music and lyrics called used to love you madly and recorded mostly in England at, at Abbey road. Oh, great. And oh, then yeah. came the dance of the deadlies. Uh, oh no. The second one was daddy's music called hot moonlight, which is a song oh. he wrote with Yipper Harburg back in the day. And uh, it's a lot of Yipper and dad's songs and, and other ones with, uh, I think it's Sidney Clare, You're My Thrill, and the Brother, Brother Can You Spare Dime with uh, yeah. Yipper. Yeah. And, uh, but I did them my way. Ha <laughs> ha. Daddy is, was gone. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> Mother helped me with it. Oh, really? And, oh, that's great. Uh, and then I did, the, the last one was Dance of the Deadlies, which is the Seven Deadly Sins, uh, sort of a, a club you know, dancing in the club, kind of disco-y, mm. kind of vibe, vibe, but really blues and jazz, and mm, got it got some good, everything got good reviews, and um, that one, uh, each song is a different deadly sin, wow. uh, at, from the point of view of the sin talking. So oh, my, very cool. <laughs> and the music is by uh, Andrew McCann, who was with Eric Clapton, he's a composer, Right. So the right. the two of us just got together and did this, and now we're writing uh, dances in heaven, which is the seven heavenly virtues, the opposite oh, of the sins. Oh, that's great! Yeah, it's harder that, to write. Much easier. That'll be your fourth. <laughs> it's much easier to write for the sins than it is for it the is. virtues. It I'm is. Sure. It has a lot of drama and stuff, and sure. it's very hard to write interesting songs about serenity. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially in 2020. <laughs> yeah, right. Especially this this year, Karen Lynn. Do you have it before we sign off? I know you have to you, know, you have to get going here. Do you have any advice for people who are listening, who are either just getting started out or who are still struggling with how they want to express themselves? Anything that you want to leave with? Just listening? do it. Do do everything until you uh, just do it and study as much as you can and uh, and uh, network. Uh, like for, for schmacting, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's schmacting. Now you have to network and, and, uh, connect and it's, it's a business, you know, and, uh, the same, I guess is true for all the other arts, but, uh, I don't, uh, I, I, I do the business stuff more with the acting and the other ones are I do for the, just the love of doing it, you know? Or the love of doing it. That's, that's I, but, but it's inspired by the acting. I get very inspired when I'm working on characters and stuff, which is very much like painting, except I'm the painting and I get to make the painting with, there's the doggy. There they go, yes. Hey, I think they're doggy. making a comment about art in the background here. I think they were here. agreeing with you. Yeah, I think they were yes. agreeing. Oh, good. Now, I did I read correctly? You were painting while you were on All My Children. You were like painting. Yes, yeah. I was. Yeah, I was so inspired. I was painting my dressing room acrylics. Oh, that's great. And I put, and it, then they would deco decorate my bedroom set. This is back oh, in the day with right, my right. paintings. And I would change the name Car Karen into Tara. Ah, nice, nice. And then later when I wanted to sell them, I changed it back. You changed it back. Oh, that's <laughs> no, great. I did, I, now I think everybody can go see um, your paintings and, and order your CDs and things like that at your website, which is KarenLynnGorney.com. Is that correct? Right. So okay, it is. Great. So it is. Yeah, it's very nice. And we'll put that right down. Let's see. How do I do this? Right down here. <laughs> so oh, goody good. Yeah. Very nice. yeah. I really enjoyed looking at your paintings. Uh, amazing. No kidding. Oh, yeah, fabulous. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the best I can do. I mean. <laughs> really, really lovely and of stuff. Course, of, of course, first one in is available on Amazon. Uh, That's right. Right. And all my songs, uh, my albums are, uh, my CDs are available on Amazon also and, and uh, Spotify and everything. YouTube. 
I have a uh, an agent now for the music, and he put them on all the stuff. So. Oh, great, great. That, that sure. seems so difficult to navigate these days. Where to put which thing in order to, <laughs> you know, get it out there in the world. Mm-hmm. I think Amazon's pretty good, but there's all different websites for uh, different stuff. You know, so you just yeah. have to figure it out. That's all. Well, Karen Lynn Gorney, thank you so much for sharing thank you. your time with us today. We're so thank grateful you. to have you on the show and for accepting our Lifetime Achievement Award at oh, Hunter Mountain Film you. Festival. Thank you for staying alive this long. Yes, yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. It was a real pleasure to talk with you. I'm just going to remind all our viewers before we sign off um, that Hunter Mountain Film Festival runs from October 23rd through the 25th, and they can look for more great content like interviews with wonderful folks like Karen. Lynn Gorney at HunterMountainFilmFestival.com. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Bye, Karen Lynn. Bye.